Hello and welcome to episode number three of Getting Started with Attributes and Vops inside of Houdini. And in this one, we'll be actually talking how we can recreate the effect that has the mount node. And it, indeed, we will be diving inside of Attribute Vop and create our displacement along normals, where we will be uh, creating this little setup. As you can see, there is a number of copies of circles. And of course, we can animate them so they can create this uh, simple motion graphics setup. Of course, we can uh, control everything from scale to frequency to offset to everything else. And we will learn a couple of tips and tricks like connectivity and colorization based on attribute as well. This will be another lesson where you will be not just learning some practical but also fundamental theoretical things that will help you along your way of learning Houdini. So let's, let's get going. But before we start, I just want to say that if you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, please consider subscribing to Patreon because all the scenes, files, and the assets will be there for you to follow along. But of course, it's not mandatory, so if you're not feeling like it, no pressure. So let's get started. As per usual, I'll just delete my geometry and recreate it, right? So jump inside, create a circle. You will see that, well, whoops, uh, indeed we have the circle. And of course, I want it to be on the ZX plane. And now we will start uh, actually trying to create some copies and start displacing our geometry along the normals. Let's just do the copy and transform. And of course, uh, we can do like number of copies, for example, seven, and translation along the y-axis, 0.2, or anything else really, it doesn't really matter. So next up, uh, let's actually drop the attribute pop. Shift enter. So we will be using the node displace along normal. And as the name suggests, we will do something with the positions. Well, basically, we will displace them along the normals. However, for that to work properly, we actually have to have proper normals, of course. So uh, let's just display normals, enable, and I'll just look at our circle. And you will see those, those faint green lines. I'm not sure if you see them on the YouTube or not, but hopefully you do. If you enable this button, you will see the normals. So these are not the normals that we actually want because they will otherwise be displacing up and down. We need to for them to go inside or outside based on the center of our circle. So we do that by polyframe. We did that previously, but if you skip that part, uh, no big deal. You will see that we will be covering all of the things that needed to do for that effect just now. So. Uh, first things first, as you can see, it computes the normals, which are basically the same as we previously had. However, what we need to do is to write the tangents as normals. So we disable the normal name as n, disable that, and write the tangent name. We'll place uppercase n here, and you'll see immediately that, first of all, if I disable the visualization of the normals, you'll see that our circle looks kind of weird, but it is looking weird because we recomputed the normals to our liking, of course. And as you can see, they're pointing towards the center of our circle. Let's increase the divisions. For example, I don't know, 40. You'll see that indeed that's what we need. So next up, as you, will, as you can see, we're copying our result. And before we do that, uh, let's just try on one of our circles. And of course, I can do the polywire. The y right is 0.3, for example. A little bit more divisions, disable this, and drop an iron normal so they kind of you know look correct. And that's our result. So let's start moving our points around. I'll enable the visualization of points so they can see what's happening. And of course, we will be moving our points based on noise because that's the easiest and more or less straightforward way to do that. So for noise to work, first you'll see that the first input is the position, and position, of course, comes from the geometry position, so each of these points, they each have their own position, of course. So we connect that, you'll see that it automatically converted to the green color, which means it's a vector information now. And the distance, as you will see, it's coming like the turquoise color, so it is the float. And the float is the amount. So the scale actually dictates 
how much of the effects is being applied. And the distance is, well, it controls the distance for each point to be displaced. Now, if I just connect, it will be um, a little bit more obvious what's happening. So if when I control the scale, you'll see that indeed we're now having the result that we actually want. So for this to be controllable a bit more, we can of course increase the frequency of our noise or we can control the offset. As you can see, it's a little bit animated. And of course the scale, well, that's what it says, controls the offset of the points. So that works. And of course, um, if we make the copies, that works as well. However, me personally, I usually um, like to do those operations like the attribute VOP. If we have the copies, I prefer to do it in the for each. So that's exactly what we're going to do. For each primitive, right? We will do the attribute VOP like this. Oops. Okay. And the result is exactly, is exactly the same. And of course, we fit that into polywire and normal. So sometimes uh, the calculation that we do inside of attribute VOP, uh, it might be dependent on the position of the points or on the number of the points or on some other like attribute class or whatever really. So it will be more consistent if you do that for each. So for each, what it does is indeed, if we do the single pass, you will see that it actually does something on each of, on each of our copies. As you can see, if we do the single pass from zero to six, remember, because we had the seven copies, uh, copies go numbers from zero to six, well, basically seven. And so you will see that each of those are being affected by our attribute VOP. If I disable this single pass, you will see that indeed we have all of our copies back. And of course, then we pull the wire and do the normal and everything works as expected. All right, so what we're gonna do now is jump inside of our attribute VOP. And for this one, I think we will middle mouse the frequency. We do the promote parameter so that we actually can control it outside of our VOP. Remember, if you're doing something inside of this node here, any change that you do here in this inside of attribute pop, it's not being compiled. So it's actually is recalculating each and every frame, for example, right? However, if we do outside, we do our changes on the compiled version of this node. So basically, if you want to control your attributes, it's much better and absolutely more efficient to promote your parameters outside and then control them from here. This will be more obvious than when we will be working with ramps. But for now, let's just, you can trust me on this one, right? So anyway, uh, next up, uh, scale, promote parameter. Again, middle mouse button. Uh, offset, middle mouse button, promote parameter. And here we go. So basically, we can now control the amount of scale, the frequency of the noise. And of course, we can do uh, control the offset if we write something like $t divided by, for example, three, you will see that we have some sort of animation going. And of course, if we polywire and normal and disable this, and for example, let's do the subdivide. So it kind of is a little bit more smooth. We can now see that indeed we have the animation. Whoops, where are we? Okay. Uh, we have our animation here. And um, yeah, there you go. You can change the scale. You can change the frequency. You can, well, basically change anything you want and everything will be working as expected. All right, so as a final thing, I promised that I will show you how to randomly colorize it. And the colorization will be again done using another attribute. But before we do that, we actually have to tell Houdini how it is connected. So let me show. If we do the color, and we place the color after our copies, right? Just something like this. We can do the color type, random from um, attributes. And as you can see, if we change the seed, all of the copies are changing um, their color, but they are, well, basically the colors are the same for each copy. So how do we do that? We do the connectivity, whoops, connectivity, right? 
uh, we get the connectivity, the connectivity type is point, the attribute is class, and of course here, the attribute that is random now, we write here class, and there you go. Um, everything working perfectly. You can now tweak the seed, and of course, the interesting part about the attributes is that they're being inherited from the geometry from top to bottom of our stack of nodes. And basically, what it means is that each and any color that was previously here, as you can see, our bottom is kind of like olive green, and the top is ocean blue. Here we see that olive green on the bottom, and on the top is ocean blue. All right, we can just disable this normal, basically, and recalculate normals here, because it's a subdivision surface. Uh, basically, what we need is perfectly smooth normals. And of course, if we jump outside, we can see that everything is looking pretty good. Finally, uh, you will see that I already created the principal shader, and it's basically, uh, let's actually recreate it. So what I'm gonna do is go to material palette, get the principal shader, drag and drop it here first, then drag and drop it here, okay? And increase the value of the base color. And now you can tweak the roughness, so it's gonna rub or um, a little bit more shiny. And of course, I have a couple of area lights. You know how to create those already. And basically, that's our setup. If I animate this, this is looking pretty cool. Okay, so again, we created circle. We recalculated the normals, right? So that the normals look um, to the center of our geometry. Then we made a number of copies. Then we created an attribute based on the connectivity. Of course, then we made color type random from attribute. And this attribute is the class the one that written here, and it randomly colorized our geometry. Then we created for each block, and each of our connected primitives was affected by our attribute Bob. Then we converted the result into polywire, subdivided the result, dropped new normals so it kind of looks more smooth, and here we go. So hopefully you learned not just theory, but a little bit of a practice how to create basic motion graphics setup using the attributes inside of Houdini. Uh, of course, there's a lot more to cover, but you know, I'm trying to keep this bite size. There is obviously a lot more to cover. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, stick around and uh, just subscribe to the channel. If you have some ideas, suggestions or anything like that, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. So hopefully you'll have a nice day uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the next one. Goodbye.